Hello everyone, welcome to another video of Pixels by Angel. In this video we will look at the new features launched by Figma today and those are Canvas stacking order, absolute positioning and a fancy new update that I love on the Smart Animate. Those are just a few that they announced today and those are the ones that we're gonna cover in this video. So let's start with the first feature and the one that I love the most actually and that is negative spacing between elements in an auto layout group. So let's see how that goes. Uh, I have this design, um, just a concept for a mobile application for a health, um, for a health app. So I have a few category components on the left sidebar. We have carbohydrates, protein and fats. So they are not yet in a group. Uh, what I can do is I can uh, I can grow and group the selection. So that will give me an option on the right side uh, for auto layout. I'm gonna go and create that. Let's just do it and uh, stop center align those elements. Okay, so just like that, uh, and the. Nice feature that they have is you can have now the um, negative spacing on those elements. So you know that you were able to add the spacing between elements even before in Figma like that. However, you were not able to add the negative space like this. So if I wanted to stack some elements, I had to find some work around that. But now it's a brilliant update and I think it was due to have this. It's something that's necessary. Uh, we often use it on a website or different applications. So negative spacing was a must uh, for designers to collaborate with developers. So that's a really, really um, good update for Figma. So we have the negative spacing. That's one of the updates. Um, they also announced a feature that allows Canvas stack in order. So when multiple layers have a negative spacing uh, creating a stack, the last object uh, in the stack will be on top by default. However, maybe for some reason you want to change the order. So now Figma will allow you to have that as well. Uh, if you press on the three dots uh, on the right sidebar, you will see there is a new option uh, for advanced layout and that gives you the canvas stacking. So um, that's gonna, you know, change basically the order of how those cards are aligned. So let me try and change that so you can see exactly a bit better. So maybe I want the last one on top uh, or the first one on top or something like that. So maybe it is not the best use case to have uh, first on top, this is Best fit for last on top. However, you might have like different use cases where you will be able to use that. But it's good to have the option. I think that's really nice for for Figma to do that. Um, okay, so that's that. Uh, let's go and um, create a new screen. Well, basically, we'll just copy that one over. Um, maybe decrease slightly more the spacing so I don't have that visible there. And in the second screen, I want those uh, cards to be expanded. So we will go and add a few margin, maybe around, uh, I don't know, 20, at around 20 pixels spacing looks good. Okay, so we have the first screen, we have the second screen uh, over here and, and Let's go and create now a new button. So I'm gonna create that. Let's make it round as, uh, as all the other elements around it inside this design. So let's just make it fit. I'm gonna take this color over. Um, let's just add some text, see more. I'm gonna make it white. Probably the font is inter on this one. Yeah, I have it inter as well. I make it bold just to make it match really good. Uh, center, center. And I'm gonna add quickly an auto layout, just call this button. 
And you know, usually in Figma, when you drop the element in a auto layout group, uh, that's gonna basically keep the spacing that is set, which is zero in our case on that on that element. Um, and somehow it's gonna break your element, your component, something that you don't really want. And if you want to avoid that, now there is an option in Figma where you can uh, select the element that you um, added to that component. And there is this nice button that's gonna set the element uh, as absolute positioning. So if you press on it, it's gonna take a property that already exists, you know, in CSS. If you are doing coding some websites, you know that absolute positioning is something that exists uh, and is, you know, frequently used by developers, uh, by front-end developers. So it makes sense to be in Figma and this update is welcome. It's gonna make your life easier. So now you can just, you know, drag around. This object is still gonna be inside the component, so it's not gonna break your auto layout if you wanna still do changes, but it's gonna make it um, be positioned uh, absolute. So that's that update. Um, I'm just gonna delete it for now. I'm gonna probably hide it in this case. Oops, I think the, this text should be hidden. Let me just, okay, there you go. I think I just, um, yeah, I, I just disabled the color. So let's just disable the whole button. I'm gonna make a third screen over and I'm gonna show you the last feature, um, which is a lovely one. It's gonna make your prototypes really cool. So I want the button visible on this screen. And let's go to prototype now. I'm gonna go and add interaction on tap. Um, so on tap, I'm gonna have navigate to, uh, actually let's just drag an arrow from that to that one. And on tap, if you press navigate to, uh, I'll give it a second screen. And now under smart animate or actually under any uh, of those options that you have here. I'm just gonna use Smart Anime for this one. And um, you now have an option to make the animation smoother. So if you want, let's say something like that, a bit gentle, um, you can have this option or you can have something quick that goes quick from one screen to another, um, the way you animate elements. Or maybe you want something slow, bouncy, uh, you know, whatever you want, or you can have something custom that you customize. Maybe you want it really, really slow, uh, but bouncing a lot, so like that. Or you want it really fast and bouncing, like quick, quick. Um, let's just try something simple. So that's one that looks good. I'm gonna keep that one and Let's go and explore the prototype. So this is our screen. Um, I'm gonna press on this and you will be able to see those cards uh, jumping. So having that smoothness to the animation that we didn't have before. Um, so you can have it also customized. Um, and yeah, let's just finish this prototype since we are there, I'm gonna drag one um, interaction from this to that. I'm gonna set it on uh, uh, while pressing or while hovering. Let's just say while pressing. Okay, actually let's just do it on tap. So you tap this uh, and that's when the see more button will show. Maybe this is the best use case for website, but for this let's just uh, let's just use it like this one. I think it still works. So while on tap, uh, navigate to that. I'm gonna keep it smart, animate. Um, just keep it linear for, for this case. We don't really need any uh, smoothness, any bouncy uh, stuff for that. So that's fine. 
so you should press on it. Anyway, uh, yeah, this, those are the features, some of the features that have been launched under uh, config. If I found um, sometime, I'm going to share more stuff uh, with you that I learned from config. Maybe some talks have been interesting, so maybe we can open a discussion uh, and, and talk about them. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, make sure to subscribe to this channel and like this video as that will help me grow this channel. Uh, and I'll really appreciate that from you. So yeah, any suggestions, any comments, let me know in the comment section and I'll see you in the next video.